money out of Wells Fargo and into community banks and credit unions uh, around the state. The other was to create a state development bank modeled on the Bank of North Dakota. Um, the Move Your Money nearly passed. Uh, the idea here is that if, if you help put state funds, which are about $1.4 billion is the size of our checking account, we pay Wells Fargo about a million and a half a year to run our bank account for us. It'd be nice to instead put some of that money into the credit unions and, lo and locally owned banks oh, that so that we can um, see the benefit in terms of their ability to make small business loans or affordable mortgages to people around the state. Uh, it almost passed and uh, failed to get a vote in the Senate uh, the last session before Richardson came into office. I introduced the bills the next go around, but this time with the addition of a state development bank, and the big banks who had been quiet on the issue before showed up with a lobbying force like you wouldn't believe. And whereas before I almost got it passed, this time it did not get out of a committee. Um, so I've recalibrated a little bit on what we want to do here. This we have this thing called the New Mexico Finance Authority, and my my, uh, you guys have been reading about it in the paper. Now there's been a problem with their audit, and that's that's true. But even it, this is an amazing thing. Even in spite of their uh, audit that was never done. The credit rating agencies have not downgraded their credit worthiness. They're still an A plus or triple A, triple A rated. Because the fundamentals of the New Mexico Finance Authority are sound. And what they do is they go around and they do a lot of the things that we were trying to do with the state bank. So they'll, they'll go to Raton. We'll want to improve a bunch of sidewalks and put in a gazebo on their town square. Or uh, the city of Socorro will want to do a new river crossing project. All small projects for these little towns that really don't have the ability to go out and offer their own bonds. And so what happens is they all come in and legislators and others put these projects into one bond package. That bond gets offered at very favorable rates, uh, far below interest rates, far below what the local communities could get. And then the state and the finance authority lends that money out to the communities who are then able to pay them back from gross receipts and other things. And, and I completely understand that the finance authority's reputation is a little uh, dinged right now because of Greg Campbell. But uh, it is the closest thing we have right now to a state bank. It basically acts as a state's development bank to municipalities and county governments. There's a tiny piece of it that can invest in private uh, initiatives. And I think the way to go here, because to try and create a whole new bank from scratch has faced so much opposition uh, on a scale that I just really, you know, it's hard to describe how much opposition I saw on this thing, uh, is to try and expand the finance authority's ability to work directly with uh, private folks. And it would be the same concept that I had before. So the idea before was I was going to take $100 million out of the finance authority's cash surpluses and use that to capitalize a bank. And then the idea is that that would is, is that my bank would work with local banks all over the state in partnership to make small business loans, so that the state <coughs> there were protections in there, so that the state was never more than forty nine percent of the loan, so that it had to be vetted by the local institution. It was ground up, not top down, so you can't have a governor forcing money to a favored person or little pet project, and the state would only lend through a local bank, so there was never a direct lender-borrower relationship. That's very much how it works and has worked for about a century in North Dakota. And the idea that there is that they just needed a source of financing that wasn't in Boston or New York. They, they were tired of those guys cracking down and, and repossessing all their family farms. So the political reality, especially with the administration that we have now, is for at least for two years the idea of creating a whole new bank is DOA with the governor. So we got, I got to look at what we have and I think the best bet at this point is to try and expand their programs that have also been successful. The Finance Authority has never lost a penny on any of its investments, which is saying a lot when you compare it to other big banks like Lehman Brothers or Bear Stearns or anybody. How much did J.P. Morgan lose last year? Like how many billions? Right. So our Finance Authority, yeah, we had this crazy audit but that didn't even exist, but we never lost any money. And they, the people that they're lending to have never failed to make a loan payment either. So their in-house standards for whether or not loans are sustainable are fantastic. And that applies both to the private and to the public. So 
I'm going to come at it from let's expand what they're already doing, and you know, let's, <coughs> let's Mexico Finance Authority could you know maybe we could change the name Mexico Development Bank or something. But that's kind of where I'm going on that idea. Yeah. Could you make some recommendations on the bonds that are up for uh, voting? Uh, well, I've already voted yes in the legislature on all the bonds, so I would just say vote yes on all of them again. Uh, I thought they were good enough for me to vote the first go around. The GEO bond, general obligation bond package, we really this time made a focus so that we're not buying a bunch of cars and a bunch of software and Xerox toner and all this junk that used to get thrown in there, right? They, there, were, there were years when they would literally have office supplies purchased with bond money, so you're paying for paper for 10 years that you used in a month. It is nuts. So we really put an emphasis on things that go to very immediate job creation. So school construction, obviously, that's a big one. Uh, jobs are created just like that right away. When you look at what else is in there, the public, to the extent there's public safety equipment uh, that's in there, it's uh, longer term, uh, bigger ticket items. So I think they're all good. And also keep in mind the higher education geo bond was defeated two years ago. So there's a fair bit of deferred need that wasn't met. And I think it's, it's fine to go ahead and, and, and vote yes on all of those. Could you address the uh, photos by Mr. Michael Alney regarding the, the significance?